guys, welcome back to um, TA Hunters. Uh, the video I'm about to uh, to make and to show you guys is based on the beginner air rifle hunters, um, and you want to give it a go, uh, taking on a few squirrels. So what I'm going to do, I'm basically going to uh, show you how to build up the feeder. Um, we take the feeder to the location. We put it up, we prep it over maybe 10 days, and then we go back a couple days before, put the hide up, and then uh, do the final shoot. So like I said, two days we do this um, filming over, and it will give you uh, loads and loads of tips uh, how I hunt down squirrels. I know I'm gonna get a lot of people who are gonna comment me and say to me, oh, you're doing it wrong, and stuff like that but I've been doing this um, air rifle hunting now for about 20 years and uh, I do know how to hunt down squirrels you know there's loads of ways of doing this but this is my way and uh, it's all, it's, this video is just for the beginners or maybe the pros as well um, but we're going to literally build up the uh, feeder now so it's going to quickly show you um, uh, what we need to build up the uh, feeders. These feeders are literally basic. I've got some bigger ones which go uh, down the farms with the pheasant pens and they hold a quite a lot of uh, feed in them. But this is just a little basic um, feeder, you know, because these feeders are very, very expensive to go out and buy. Um, I am filming in my backyard here. We've got the chickens, so we're all going to be a little bit noisy. So, uh, well, I'll spin the camera around. I'm going to show you uh, my little my little setup I've got for building these feeders. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly show you the feeder we've got now. I've already built one up now. Uh, so we're going to build a replica of this feeder, right? I'm going to spin the camera around. So, right. This is what I've got. I've got a... Uh, a load of old spare wood here, which I've got from site, which I borrowed from site, and we're going to build this feeder here. It's just literally basic, and what you need to do as well, when building these these feeders, you need to put a plate on the front here because the squirrels will get in there, dig away at that if you leave it to dry, uh, leave it. Um, and don't top it up for a while. They will smash that to bits, which I'll show you over here. One of my old feeders. Well, it's falling down now. Got a target there. So you've got one of my old feeders there. We'll just pull it up. As you can see, it's battered up. We've got a, a plate on the front, and that will stop any of these squirrels uh, digging in there and trying to pull the last peanuts out. These squirrels do eat through uh, soft metal as well, as I will show you on my other feeders back in my garden. But right, that is the wood we're gonna use. I'll just quick show you now the bits on my little table. So, Got a couple of beers, that's the most important thing. And we've got a just a, a little diagram, and uh, that will give you a basic idea to build a little feeder. We've got the odd screws there, and we've got this as well. This is a, a bit of an electric box which I borrowed from work, which I'm not going to have it back. I borrowed quite a few actually for my feeders. And I just bent down the ends, and uh, that is going to be used as a tray, like that. Nice and simple, and easy to build. So right, let's get on and uh, build this feeder. You're going to get a little bit of noise off these uh, chickens, but ignore them. Right, here 
here we go. We've got the wood here. All I'm going to do now is go measure it all up and get this cut to length for the feeder. First of all, let's have a beer. Lovely. Right, let's go. Right, as you can see, I ain't no uh, top uh, carpenter or anything like that. Uh, as you notice by the tools I'm using, I'm using a rusty old blunt saw. But it seems to be doing the trick. Um, I know it's a little bit slow, but this is why I'm about to speed the uh, film up. But what more could you want? Out in the backyard, the sun's out, you've got a couple of beers, and you're building a couple of feeders to take on a few squirrels. Right, now I've got all the bits all cut up. Um, what we need in that, we can now start building the feeder. First things first, a bit more beer. Right, whilst making this film, there's going to be no acting going on here. This is me being me, you know, and I do piss about here and there and uh, trying to entertain myself. Went out in the yard building the feeders. Um, I do suffer with um, a little bit of ADHD. Uh, this is why it's hard for my little brain to uh, shut down. You know, through the film you'll notice that um, I do mix my words up a lot. It's because uh, my brain is going 100 miles an hour and, uh, this, and this is what I've got to deal with, you know. But end of the day, I'm out here building the, building the feeders and uh, showing you, well, all the beginners, uh, how uh, I do all this, you know. And um, I'm doing this for, like I said, for the beginners and my followers and all my friends. You're going to get the old troll out there who will slag this. Uh, video off but you know what I don't care about them you know this is what I like doing prepping all my uh, all my feeders and uh, prepping up for my squirrel shoes <laughs> right that is the feeder all done nice and simple and easy to make you might want to put a plate just put a little plate on the front of that and it, it will help stop them uh, squirrels getting in and we've got the other one here this one I built earlier well in the week so we've got two two feeders basically the same made out of old scrap bits of wood so right this feeder here I'm gonna literally replace it with the one just at the back of the yard um, I've done a video a squirrel video on my last video and um, when I went to uh, pack up three more squirrels squirrels come down to the feeder and there was a few more peanuts in there so I just let them get on with it went back a day later and they've literally ripped the feeder apart so remember don't leave the uh, feeders dry well actually what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take you down there and uh, show you what I mean. Come on me.
Right, that's what I mean about the feeder getting destroyed uh, through leaving it dry for a few days. So the feed I've just made up there, I will probably replace that one. Because it is, uh, it is quite old now. And uh, these ain't built to last really. At the end of the day, it costs me nothing to build them. So, happy days. So what we're going to do now, we're going to uh, head out to the, to the lo location, which is, which the golf course is there, and it's about um, a 10 minute walk, just to a, uh, a woodland uh, next to the fairway. That's where um, the pest control job is. So what's happened down there, down the golf course, so uh, the rangers have uh, put bird boxes up all around the golf course because they love their wildlife. And uh, they've had to put metal plates over it because the squirrels have been getting in and killing all the chicks around the golf course. And they're moaning about one of the uh, fairways, um, which you got a long, which the wood we're going in is 70, about 70 meters wide and about 300 meters long so it's a nice thin pine wood and uh, that's where the squirrels are in but also the other side of the fairway there's another a woodland so they're running back and forward across the fairway and just causing da damage because the green's right next to it as well so uh, we'll head out there now uh, where I've got another feeder which is identical to the one we've just built, just a little bit shorter, um, which has been out there now, which has been up and running now for, I think it's uh, just about, just over a week. No, it's about a week now, just over a week. And one of the days I couldn't get to it and it went a little bit dry. And you can see what the squirrels have done to that uh, feeder when we go out there. So we'll go out there now, I'll just, um, I'll show you the, uh, well I can't show the location where it is, of where the golf course is, very private, but we'll show you uh, where the feeder's all set up, and uh, why I've set it up there, and I'll show you the distance between the feeder and uh, the hide, which I'm going to be shooting from. So right, let's go. So right, we're about two minutes away. It's just the other side of that pond there. We've got the wood. And uh, that's where the feeder is. But the sun is going down quite quick. Also the temperature has started to drop. Um, you might have noticed by the old nipples. Nipples getting a little bit hard through the cold. But uh, I don't know why I'm playing with them, but um, yeah, they, yeah, like I'm not a woman, eh? If I was a woman with them boobies, I'd probably have a few more followers. Watch out for forms everywhere. Whew. 
Right, one more way there now. Um, I'm nearly there. The wood I'm in now is quite dense till I get to where I am, it opens up a little bit more. But um, I'm actually getting cut up here quite bad, so I won't need it wearing a t shirt. And it's starting to get a little bit cold as well. So the uh, sun is dropping quite quick, so we've got to be quick with this. Um, um, but here we go, it's all opened up now. And, uh, and as you can see, we're heading towards the feeder. It's going to be a little bit windy as well, around here. But we're at the feeder now. And here we go. So right, I've had a quick look in it, and as you can see, gone down quite a lot. Um, on top of the box, this is where the aniseed oil all sits. Gone a little bit dry now, and I will put some more in there, I'll just show you in a minute. Um, I'm gonna put some on the, the lid, and I'm gonna put some on the uh, the little tray. Well, next to the little platform next to the tray, yeah? That's where you're all gonna sit. And the reason um, I'm gonna put it there, um, is because well actually I'm going to put a quite a bit on there some people say um, if you could put like a, a few drops here and there it does help but I think the best way is to pour it all on top of the lid uh, smother it all around and on the uh, little platform there and what that does when the squirrels come down they will um, they will uh, come down start feeding and all the aniseed oil will get on the fur and it's quite sticky and it really does smell quite nice so what they do once they've um, had their feed they run up into the trees and they take all the scent with them and they spread it around the um, trees and uh, that should bring in more squirrels around the area just over there is the fairway of the uh, golf course and just beyond that is another woodland so uh, we're going to try and bring the squirrels from right over there into this little woodland. So right, let's feed this back up and uh, I'll show what I mean about the, uh, the underseed oil. So right, let's get to it. Well, I have poured quite a lot of it on the feeder. What I've got to do now is just spread it all around. It's dripping everywhere. Because that's what we want. We want to be, we want to be all over the place. This oil. This thing is absolutely stinks, but it smells quite nice. So, now that's done, I'm going to start to pour it. We'll put little droplings just around on the trees around the feeder as well. Uh, the more we put out of this, the more it should bring the squirrels in. So right, that is the path we've got. A nice clear path. You really want to be going down here, just taking a few of these branches off. They are all dead along here. And also you want to be clearing the floor as well. Um, of any uh, debris, anything like that. Any sticks sticking up. See, I took these off. These are all dead, as you can see. Like literally dead. Just literally just falling apart. 
you can see why I've been putting a little bit of aniseed oil on there as well. And uh, look, that she just falls in your hands, falls apart in your hands. I've so got the aniseed oil there as well, and a few more branches being taken off there. But look, dead. That's why we want to break all these uh, little twigs off. Also on here as well, you might get your one we need to take off as well. But that one's okay, that's not really interfering with the feeder. So that is your clear path to the hide. Right, the reason why I'm walking away from the feeder is because I want to show you roughly where the sun you want the sun really coming up behind you at the hide, which is over my shoulder there. You want the sun coming up right over the top of you, which is going to throw loads of light onto the feeder. And once the squirrels on that feeder and they're looking at a, um, a sun coming up, they're going to be a little bit blind with that and you're not going to silhouette so much. You don't want the sun coming up behind the feeder because the reason why that comes up behind the feeder and the squirrels come down to feed, that light is gonna shine straight on top of you. And if you're aiming the rifle, you're gonna catch a part of the lens, which is gonna glow and it will scare off the uh, squirrels. Also, you don't want all that light belting through the end of that, or in front of that um, scope, because it would just interfere with all the image uh, when taking the shot. So, let's get on with the hide. I'll just quick show the hide. The hide is uh, gonna be 21 meters away, which you need to get out in the morning and just zero your rifle and to make sure you're, you're putting pellet through pellet. Yeah, but just see how it is. And also check the weather as well. You don't want it to be raining or anything like that or a windy day. You want it to be a little bit cloudy. I like it if it's cloudy, because you don't really want the sun belting through where you're shooting as well, especially in the morning sun. It does come up quite bright when it comes up in the morning. So right, spin the camera around. It's gonna show you the hide. Right, the hide is that. I'm gonna be sitting against that tree there and behind it, um, behind the tree, I'm gonna stick, stick a little bit of netting up there just for like a backdrop and that's, that'll disguise any movement. Also, I'll just stick a little bit of netting at the front uh, at the front and that will uh, that should uh, camouflage me up just a little bit better but we're going to that on the next video when I start putting all the netting up so look that is it all ready to go uh, be honest the feed is going down uh, really really quick so I might actually come out I've got another week on this but I'll probably come out in in the next four days. Next four days will be a Sunday. I'll probably come down on the uh, third day, early in the morning, because I haven't set a trail camera up. I don't really want to set a trail camera up here, because uh, obviously you've got the golfers there, and they might come in this woodland uh, later on and have a wee, like they do. There's a few golf balls around here as well. And um, see the camera, and they might end up um, nicking it and I don't want that now do we so we're going to leave the uh, uh, troll camera away from this feeder and I'll come back in the morning Saturday morning in my little leaf suit with a thermal and I'll just have a little uh, scan and get a rough idea how many squirrels are coming to that feeder so that aniseed oil like I said earlier it's going to stick to the fur and actually it's going to spread it all around the uh, woodland at the minute, I know you can't smell this, but that is really, really strong. It really is strong, and it's literally, the wind's coming over this little hill here, and it's blowing right across here, and it's throwing loads of scent of that aniseed oil everywhere. So hopefully, we should get a few squirrels off this uh, feeder. So all right, I think I've covered it for this, uh, for this video. And uh, we'll come back on the next one. So on the next one, quickly, um, 
I'm going to be just retopping it up and uh, setting the hide up and then doing the big shirt. So right, I hope that's uh, helped helped you with um, a few tips and how I uh, take on these squirrels. So right, this shoot off, and I'll see you in a, see you in, a, in about four days. See you later.